Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. My guest today was on the show a few years ago, and her interview was a huge hit, and she herself has since blown up. She's been nominated for and won tons of awards, including this year's ABN for Fan Favorite Star. I am so excited to have her back on to catch up and especially talk about her life as a vixen angel. Please welcome the one and only Violet Myers. Thank you so much for having me, Holly. When you came on, your star was definitely steadily rising, yeah. but you were a little bit newer. And I mean, a great example, and we were talking about this earlier, of how incredibly big you've become is when I went to X3 and I saw you at your signing table and the line was so long and it snaked like through the convention and it was the longest line there. Yeah. And I think it, I don't, it was either as long or possibly longer than Angela White's. Her and I always have like the longest line. Yeah. Well, I know her and I, we just have like such compassion and mm -hmm. love for our fans. And mm -hmm. I, I feel like it shows when we yeah. go to these events. Yeah, no, definitely. I love Angela. She's like an amazing, she's an amazing person. She's like one of my favorite people. Yes, she is. A lot of people hold her to like the standard and yeah, you are like, is. you are there. And so- how does that feel for you? Like when you see a line like that now when you're at conventions, does it just... Doesn't feel real. Does it does, it? No. Like I was saying like off yeah. camera, like imposter syndrome yeah. for sure. And I think it's because like when I... I did Exotica like a long time ago. I think it was like 2018, I think, or 2019, one of those mm -hmm. years. And I remember, I still had fans come t up to my booth, but I remember I would see like the other girls and have like these long lines and I'll be like, it wouldn't act, it wouldn't make me sad, but it, I felt like it motivated me to get mm -hmm. to that point. And then, you know, just to see it now, like it doesn't feel real. And like, mm -hmm. it just, it really just makes me appreciate the time that people spend just even meeting me. I forget sometimes that there's long lines, but mm -hmm. I even I'll like take a pause from one fan and then just say hi to the whole line and just thank them for being there mm -hmm. just because, you know, it is like time consuming, but I try to make it go fast. But it's like I just want to meet everyone and just yeah. thank them, take a photo with them, yeah. sign and you wanna, their merch. And you want to give like everyone that time, right? Because exactly. they spent so long waiting for you. I tell them to pinch me because some of them don't think I'm real. <laughs> so I'm like, no, I'm real. I'm a real person. <laughs> what is like the most common comment that you get from your fans? A lot of them will ask me either on a date or they'll <laughs> or they'll just ask me what's my favorite anime. Okay. Either or. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they'll ask you on a date like literally right there in line. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, do you follow me first? Because I do go out on dates on my YouTube channel uh -huh. with my fans. And okay. it makes it easier to see them in person because I know that they're like a real person and mm -hmm. not like a catfish. Mm -hmm. But yeah, most of them will either ask me that or the other question, anime. Yeah. So you definitely have this you know, like I, I think you've called it before, like this geek side to you that Definitely. probably a lot of guys relate to and love. Yeah. So what do you think has been the secret to your success? Like, can you kind of imagine? I know it's probably a strange question to no, answer yeah. I feel, because I you're always like, what do you mean? I'm like, it's, it sounds you think conceited, that a secret? but no, I mean, what do you think makes you so popular? I think it's just the, my authenticity. Mm -hmm. I think that people can tell that I, one in my movies that I'm actually like, that's for real. Mm -hmm. If the guy's not making me come, I'm going to make myself come. So I'm giving the best orgasm because I was a porn consumer. I mean, I still am, but not mm -hmm. as much as I was like when I would watch it earlier. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of people can tell that I'm being authentic in my movies, but yeah. also it carries to social media. And I think also to collaborations with not just like adult stars but I think also doing it outside of like like uh, for example my interests are obviously anime so I'm going to want to collaborate with anime people because that's something I'm interested in and, and I have a lot of knowledge and so when I do these collaborations with people I feel like um, it's a whole new audience besides the porn audience mm -hmm. and I think just getting into the safer workspace um just being really nice. Mm -hmm. And you know, people say that getting getting you, they, they don't think that being a good person doesn't get you far, but I believe so. I agree. You know, just being nice. I remember early on, like in my career, just my my agent at the time would tell me, just, just be respectful, always be on time on set, just give like a good representation of yourself. 
because then people will only speak good things about you. And I yeah. think just because of my work ethic and my personality and just being a good person overall, like, yeah. I think that's like the sauce. And I think people think like I'm just bullshitting or anything. Like I don't like, I don't buy followers. Like I think just people just see a genuine person and that I'm a real person. And obviously we have similar interests, like besides like all, I like a bunch of things. So mm -hmm. I think it just makes it more relatable. And I think when people see that, they identify with it and they want to stick with it. Yeah, I think authenticity is really important, especially now in this day and age where fans can connect directly with their mm -hmm. favorite performer, you know, through OnlyFans and all that kind of stuff. Engaging yeah. too. Because I know a lot of people will tell me in person too, they'll tell me, I actually appreciate you like talking to me, liking me, on liking my posts, interacting with my comments. Like, I appreciate that because you could see it. Like, I feel like a lot of stars don't really mm -hmm. acknowledge their fans, which is like, that's that, that's on them. Like, that's their preference. Mm -hmm. Some people like to separate the two, mm -hmm. but I like blend it together. And like, I never think I'm too good enough to talk mm -hmm. to them or anything. Like, I've always, from the beginning, have always commented and some of them will still be like why are you talking to me i'm like because you're like you're talking to me so yeah. i don't want you to talk to a wall right 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 you know i do know <laughs> that a lot of performers sometimes won't go into the comments and especially respond because there's a lot of negative ones there is in there. a lot of there too. do you you get that too oh yeah. yeah yeah a lot all the time and i think having a strong mindset and just blocking them kind of goes away because then when you block people mm -hmm. you don't see it again yeah or when you turn off your phone, like, okay, if you see a negative comment, turn off your phone. Yeah. Or like go on another app. Like just don't identify with it because I notice a lot of people want you to interact with their negative yeah. comments because that's the best way you can get a response. Mm -hmm. So some people will do that. Yeah. No, I think for some people, any attention is attention. Yeah. Like a child, like my child. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not paying attention. She will act badly to get my attention. Same and thing. I, and, those negative comments often, I think, will provoke attention more than the positive ones. Because yeah. I'm sure you're like this. Pretty much everybody on the planet is like this. You can get 10 compliments and one negative comment and you will remember the negative comment and not the compliments. Like we just as a species tend to focus on the negative. I think it could be too because I feel like I'm my own worst critic. So mm -hmm. when you hear something that's on the other side, it's kind of like validating your negative comment. Yeah, if they're touching on something that you might be sensitive about. Yeah, but yeah. you kind of have to learn to turn it off because it's not real. Mm -hmm. Most of these people will never give you that negative attention on like in person. Mm -hmm. It's always online. Yeah. So I, I kind of had to learn that early yeah. on. You're right, because I think it's easy to get caught in the social media bubble and in that yeah. world and like think that that's the real world and all these people who are leaving comments who aren't you're not face to face with them. You're not interacting with them. You're right. You can literally just put down your phone and they're gone, mm -hmm. right? They're not the people in your life that, you know, matter really. Exactly. So it's, but it's, for some people, I think it's really hard to disengage. Yeah. I had, um, I had a fan that was like defending me from some like cyber bullying that was mm -hmm. going on, but obviously I can't help it. There's always going to be people that don't like me. Yeah. And he was defending me and I tell my fans like, it's okay. Like don't go to war for me sometimes because it's a losing battle. Mm -hmm. Cause some of these you're fighting with kids. Yeah. You know, a lot of kids have phones nowadays. So yeah. It sucks. I think there should be some kind of like regulation there. Yeah. But I had a fan like tell me he was suicidal two years ago because of some cyber bullying mm -hmm. going on. And I, I feel like, it's a hard subject to really think of because that's like the new form of bullying because a lot of people, right. they won't deal with bullying on like in person. So mm -hmm. it's online and they just don't have the strong mindset to really mm -hmm. deal with that. So it's 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 hard, honestly. But when you have people that love you and appreciate you outside of online, mm -hmm. what, which I hope people that, you know, get bullied on the Internet, you know, there's someone out there that loves you. Yeah. Yeah. And I think also the problem is too with cyberbullying, especially I think when it comes to younger people is that, you know, we all got bullied in school, right? Yeah. I mean, phones were not around when I was in school. That's how old I am. And kids bullied me at school. But yeah. like when I went home, the bullying was over. Yeah. Now you go home and they're bullying you online too. So it, like it never goes it never away. Ends, yeah. And because it's not in person, people are, are more brave. And I think we'll say things yeah. that they wouldn't say face to face. Mm -hmm. So it's it's like more aggressive and it it's is. like constant. That's rough. I feel really bad for kids these days having to deal with that. Yeah. And then AI too. So yeah. Like, oh, 
yeah, yeah. it's just gonna get worse but it's kind of like when it gets worse it gets better mm-hmm. so i mean i mean we've always like figured out how to deal with yeah. new technology yeah. in a positive way right just like, block there's, it out. A, there's always yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah but it's like that pendulum swing right like yeah. it goes and then we just kind of you know, figure out, okay, this is, these are these new things. The new things. norm. Yeah. I know for me, I'm really cautious about my daughter's screen time. And I think before should, parents yeah. didn't really think about that that much because it was a new thing, right? So mm-hmm. we, we learn as we go along and we adapt. Humans are, if anything, adaptable. Yeah, because I know with, um, even with COVID when that happened, you know, mm-hmm. we just learn to adapt to new situations. And like yeah. those who don't, like they don't stay. Yeah. And like, you know, it's kind of, like, it's just life. Yeah. Yeah. What has been your favorite experience in the industry so far, like since I've last seen you? Honestly, just the set life is so different now, obviously, because I was contracted. I think after we did that video, because I think that was like a 2021-ish, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. Um, I got contracted with Vixen. Mm -hmm. So then I was contracted with them exclusively for a year and a half. That kind of taught me how to be more of an actress Mm. than more of a traditional, like just gonzo star. Yeah. Because I would just do like silly scripts and Mm -hmm. then just be done. But being on a Vixen set really taught me a lot of patience and how to be an actor because... You know, I used to think just being a porn star would just be like, you go on set, you have sex and you leave. But no, I mean, it's still like that too. But Vixen Sets taught me like reading a script, like a long script and how to act, be more expressional and all this. So I feel like I've changed so much in a positive way because then I learned so much with Vixen that I can carry that now, whether it's my content or with other studios I just feel like I have so much more patience. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, when you're on their set, they are long sets and they take care of you. That's a good thing. But you really know what it's like to be on a movie set. Yeah. Because it is a movie set. Yeah. And that's the thing. I think what a lot of people don't realize is that if you're shooting like a true cinematic piece, like everything takes time because yes. the lighting setup takes Voice time. Acting. And yeah, I mean, there's so many elements to it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not just like sticking you in a white room that's like just flat with lit a couch with a then- white couch and then you just go for it. It's like in every, you know, moment. If you really look at a movie, it's so interesting because after I started directing, I looked at movies so differently. Mm-hmm. Every single little fucking tiny shot that you see, it's a two second shot. And you don't really register it when you're watching the movie because you're immersed and you're enjoying it. But if you pull back and look at it, like every single one of those shots took time to mm-hmm. set up. Different that, angles, yeah. right? All that shit takes forever, but it like looks so amazing, yes. you know? Like all of those cuts and all those different angles, like that's what builds the story. Mm-hmm. And you don't really realize it until you're in it. And then I'll be like on set sometimes, I'll be like, oh my God, they're making me walk so many times. But then when you see the trailer, the movie, yeah. you're like, okay, it makes sense. They want to get the side angle. They want to zoom in with the butt. Yeah. They want to get the hair flip. They want to, but yeah. then it just comes out so good that you're like it was worth it definitely yeah i learned that and i appreciate it now (laughs) yeah Uh, it's it's really nice to work with models who understand what that's like because yeah days can be very long and you can definitely get girls who are like why is this taking so long and it's like because like do you want it to look like a vixen production or do you want it to look like a gonzo thing that was shot in like your Mm -hmm. bedroom obviously you gotta have both yeah what is your favorite kind of scene to shoot, by the way? Is it like a feature with acting and stuff now? Or do you prefer the more gonzo or is it? I like both. Like both. I like to give my fans both options mm-hmm. in case they want a storyline mm-hmm. with me doing something that's not like traditional, mm-hmm. like a real movie or, you know, just something where it's like, you know, you just wear some lingerie tees and then go straight to the sex. Like mm-hmm. I like giving them both, but I love doing both. Like, whether I get booked for a long scene or a short scene, like I'm just there and I'm like, all right, let's do it. Cause I'm really going into it thinking like I want to satisfy my fans. Mm -hmm. Like I do it for myself, obviously. Like Mm -hmm. I love what I do. Like I will never complain about it here and there. I will, but it's like very, like who doesn't complain about their job? I love complaining. It's like my favorite thing. Yeah, me too. (laughs) I I like complain about bills. I complain about sometimes I drink too much water. I pee a lot. Like, you know, we always complain about something, but these are like good complaints. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Quality problems. Problems. Yes, not first world problems, but first world problems. Basically. Yeah, 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 both. Um, but yeah, I just like I like giving my fans and like 
basically I feel like I live for them, which is not a bad thing. I it, it motivates me, mm-hmm. and I feel like I just I feel like that's my purpose. It's mm-hmm. like, well, one of my purposes is to like make people happy, whether that's like doing a podcast, doing a movie, a YouTube video, like mm-hmm. like anything. I just feel like. I do it for them, but I do it for me. Like, we bounce off each other. Well, I mean, but then that's what makes you, like, the perfect performer, right? Yeah. Because if the work that you're doing to satisfy your customers is also fulfilling for yourself, like that's the perfect combo that a lot of people don't get to have. Yeah. Like, a lot of people don't f- feel fulfilled by their work. Yeah, some people will just do it for, you know, mm-hmm. money, which is okay. Like, it's like, like I said, it's like any other job. Yeah. But it's such a satisfying feeling when people will tell you, especially when I do these events, I'm like, oh, I love that, that movie you did. Like, I liked your acting. I liked, like, they don't go into details too mm-hmm. much, but mm-hmm. they'll just, you know, it's it's good to see it on a cover or like see people appreciate it or even seeing the views. I just hit a billion views on next videos. Oh, wow. I'm almost at a billion on Pornhub. So it's like, it's like, it makes me like motivated because like, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you're definitely, one cannot call you like a newbie anymore. Like you are. I still feel like it sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I've been, this year is going to be six. In six. September. Oh, wow. Six years in September. Congratulations. Yeah. It's going to be 26 years for me in September. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm I'm not old, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't look it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so your first gangbang was released in May. Mm-hmm. How did that go? And why made you decide to finally do that? I wanted to pace my career, obviously. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to, I want to keep the fans wanting more and more. So that's why, that's just how I wanted to do my career. Everyone's free to do how they mm-hmm. want it. But I felt like this year was the year because the like two years ago, I did my first anal. Then the next year, I did my first CP. Then mm-hmm. I was like, okay, now I can do my first anal DP gangbang. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to pace myself, but I also wanted to be mentally prepared and physically prepared because when you're going into these scenes, your your mental has to be there because you have to remember you're in a room full of like a lot of giant dicks. Like they're not going to give you a small dick gangbang. I could do it for my OnlyFans, but I can't do it for a scene, you <laughs> yeah, know, the yeah, movie, yeah, yeah. like a production set. Because they want to, especially when you have, when you're curvy, yeah. they want to see yeah. the penetration. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, that's the thing. Like a lot of guys ask why are dicks so big and porn? And I'm like, a lot of times it's logistics. You have to be able to see the penetration and there needs to be enough like of the dick that you can create space between yourself and the performer and open up to camera so you can see it all at the same time. And if a girl has a big butt, then it's like, it's harder. It's harder. Yeah. hundred mm-hmm. percent. So I wanted to be mentally prepared. I wanted to be physically prepared. Like I wanted to be in the gym working out. I was doing like a lot of those like squats, but I was like doing them like kind of like a, like an isolation of it. So I would just be pumping my oh, legs okay. so yeah, like yeah. I can ride for a certain amount of time. <laughs> like I was like a real athlete. Yeah. So then also too, when you're doing like a scene like that, you have to be prepared because you can't just go on set and be like, all right, I'm ready. Mm-hmm. Like give me a gangbang. You can't do that. I mean, some people can, but I just wanted to do my research, make sure like when I do my first ever, it it's like how I want it to look. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what Vixen did. Like they... Mm-hmm. Brought it to life. They let me choose the talent as well. and Or like approve of the talent. Because I was like, you guys handle that? Because I don't know like who's good or not. And mm-hmm. like, just let me... Like, you handle that part. But also like, let me see what they look mm-hmm. like. So yeah. I can be prepared too. Yeah. And when I got to set, I was really nervous. But I feel like when you do anything for the first time, like, it's always going to be really nervous. And if it's something you care about. Exactly too. Because I wanted to make sure I looked good. <laughs> Because I'm gonna be on the internet forever, so. Um, but honestly, I I was also really excited. You know, I was mm-hmm. like, wow, like this is like a fantasy. Like it's not everyone's fantasy, but I've always watched like a lot of gangbang hentai's, mm-hmm. not really like real life ones. I did for research, but I I do enjoy like watching the gangbang hentai's. Mm-hmm. So to feel, because I already call myself an anime girl, so I felt like I it's I I have to do it. So. Yeah. Yeah. My fans can also see that too. And it was it was a very fun experience. I would definitely do it again. Yeah. But I would probably have to I want it with different size dicks. It doesn't always have to be big dicks. You want do you want a, a like normal. A normal dick gangbang? Yeah. A normal size dick gangbang. Yeah, I want variety <laughs> next time. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> what about gangbangs do you like? Because so often the idea is that the people think 
that a gangbang is degrading to women. And like, so how do you see it? I see it as not everyone's fantasy is going to be a bunch of men or women, you know, wanting to have sex with them. But when you, I mean, everyone films it differently, but Mm -hmm. how I feel like I did it was like, not as degrading because I also wanted to be catered to. Mm -hmm. And I also wanted like the guys to be into it as Mm -hmm. well, as much as I was. And I mean, you can choose as many people as you want in it. It doesn't have to be like eight, like how I want it. I wanted Mm -hmm. to go all out. I was Mm -hmm. like, it's my first one. I might as well do as many as I can. Mm -hmm. So it was eight guys. (laughs) I had like eight or nine guys in Mm -hmm. it. I think. Yeah. There were so many guys. I think it really just depends on how you see it. Mm -hmm. And you have to remember we're consenting to it. Like Mm -hmm. I want to do it. And when I do these videos, I want it to be on camera. Mm -hmm. It's not like I'm not consenting to it. So I think it it could be, I I don't really see it as degrading. Because if you really watch it, like I'm being catered to, like these men are making sure I'm satisfied. I'm having so many dicks. It's like, it's like a, it's like a fantasy. It's not real. This is what gets me frustrated about that question that I'm asking you, <laughs> mm-hmm. because it when you ask that, it's this automatic assumption that sex is like inherently degrading for women in a way. Yeah. Right. And because if when a man has sex with a lot of women, you never ask the guy if they felt degraded. Right. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's always the opposite because it's like the woman's always the victim. And I like to ask this question of people who like to, women who like to do gangbangs because I like to show that a lot of women find it empowering. Mm-hmm. They find exactly what you said, that they feel catered to. They feel worshipped. They feel surrounded by men that are there for them. And I think that's an important narrative to push forward so that women can see, oh, you know, I can have, because a lot of women have gangbang fantasies yeah. and you don't have to be ashamed of that. Like, and it's not degrading. And if you're consenting to it and it's something that you want to do, like, why can we not flip it and say, well, rather than these men are all using this one woman for their pleasure, why can't we look at it as this woman is being catered to and pleased by all of these men? Mm-hmm. Like, why can't it be reciprocated in some way? Exactly. Why does it always have to be like stacked against the woman? I think because men also like to sexualize women. Mm-hmm. We don't really sexualize men as much as like mm-hmm. a man does to a woman. Yeah. So I feel like it's a lot of projection yeah, too. 100%. A lot of guys just see it as negative like i don't know adult films are obviously fantasy Mm -hmm. you know i wouldn't really do that in real life because one i feel like it's hard to find guys who are okay with working and like sharing one woman (laughs) i talk about this too often like it is so hard to organize a gangbang it is it is a lot of work there's always going to be someone there in the corner jacking off because he's feeling really nervous that there's these bigger guys that are there too yeah it's a lot. So that's why it's meant to be on camera only. I know there's people that do gangbangs mm-hmm. in like their personal life, but that's hard. Like unless it's like an NBA team or something, but <laughs> or they're all willing to share. But most guys like who wouldn't want like a gangbang? If a guy would want a bunch of girls fighting for them, it's like, yeah, it's like for me, I never had so many guys fight for me. So yeah. when I do it, it's like, all right, let's see who gets who gets the hole first or something <laughs> like that. You know, it's at the end of the day, I'm a porn star I make fantasies it's like I want people because people I'm sure I've had so many people tell me I want to see her do a gang like it's not just mine but it's Mm -hmm. also other people's yeah yeah I mean there's something hot about like all those bodies coming together and and what I love too is you know I've I've directed only a couple of gangbang Mm -hmm. um and it's funny because the ones that I've directed have been gangbangs that the girl organized and mm-hmm. hired me to shoot. One was for Riley Reed and mm-hmm. one was for Lisa Ann and then okay. Joanna Angel, but I only did pictures for that. Okay. And so that was really fun because like the girls booked the guys, like they mm-hmm. wrote them the checks afterwards. They selected them. It was for them. It was what they wanted. It's really cool to watch if you step back the way that the guys like flow and work yeah. together. You know, this like unspoken communication. They'll like look at each other like, okay, you ready, man? Okay, I'm going to pull it. Like your turn. Yeah. Like it's cool. It's almost like a choreography dance. It is because that's why it has to, it's not just about the women too. The guys have to have somewhat chemistry. Yeah. It's more about the guys. It if really the guys can is. work together. Yeah. yeah. They are fighting for obviously the girl's attention, but it's also like, okay, you next, bro. Like, go ahead. Yeah. Like, it's, yeah. I've had too much of this. Like, I got to share. Yeah. Cause it's also like, it's for the camera. Like, you can't, if it's just one guy fucking her and the other guys are standing around like jerking off. Just like, That's, not not fair. That's not fair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm like, I did for mine. Cause obviously I did my research. I got to have 
every handy if I could I would have done with my hands too but obviously yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. really hard yeah. I, would have, I would have been literally like a like what is it like a seal basically at that point <laughs> but it is a lot of work though yeah. and, but at the end you're like wow I just did that yeah <laughs> it's not like I do it all the time either like it's like here and there I like to just give that to the, the audience yeah well then it makes it special if it's not every day <laughs> yes exactly yeah. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and then we're going to come back. We're going to talk about Violet's podcast and all this other stuff that she's doing. So stick around. I'll see you in just a minute. Hey, listeners, are you ready to transform your sexual wellness? Meet Butter Wellness, the brand that's revolutionizing men's sexual health with a focus on education, innovation, and approachability. So let's talk about their standout product, the Perennium Massager. It's the only device designed for external stimulation of the male G-spot. So no, guys, you don't have to stick anything in there. Experience stronger full-body orgasms that redefine pleasure. But that's not all. The perennial massager also helps combat erectile dysfunction and promotes prostate health. By increasing blood flow to the pelvic region, it aids in achieving stronger erections and strengthening pelvic floor muscles, which helps prevent ED and other prostate issues. It can also be a wonderful couple's toy. Women love it as a clitoral stimulator, making it perfect for shared pleasure. So whether you're adding spice to foreplay or it's the main event, it's versatile for everyone. You definitely should start off with their starter kit, which includes the perennium massager and their water-based lubricant. This pH-balanced, lightweight, hydrating lubricant is free of glycerin, glycol, and parabens, offering a natural, long-lasting glide for solo or couple sessions. Butter Wellness is elevating your pleasure. And right now, Butter Wellness is offering our listeners 15% off of your entire order when you enter code HOLLY at butterwellness.com. That's butterwellness, B-U-T-T-E-R-W-E-L-L-N-E-S-S and use code HOLLY to get 15% off of the Perennium Massager or the Butter Starter Kit. Butterwellness.com, code HOLLY. The link is in the episode's description. Hey guys, we are back. So... Violet, your exclusive contract with Fixin is over. So now you're open to working with other companies. Mm -hmm. Are there any new scenes coming out that people should be excited to see? Well, I got booked for a few VR scenes. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do, I'm going to be doing more VR. I know my fans love that. Um, Just like other studio work, obviously, I'm still going to be working with Vixen. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm still in a contract, but it's non-exclusive. So I can still work with whoever I want. I just got to fulfill my Vixen Angel duties. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, and then being a Vixen Angel, you you went to Japan to mm-hmm. shoot, right? Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. I've never been to Japan. It looks like such a cool place it to It is visit. such a fun, like, I think it should be on everyone's bucket list just yeah. because the culture is, like, so beautiful. That was fun. So it wasn't, I mean, it was my idea. Like, we had talked about it when mm-hmm. I first signed with them. And then... They were like, hey, so we're thinking about going to Japan. I was like, I thought you guys were joking. They're like, no, we want to go. I was like, we don't have to. We can do like a whole different, we can go to somewhere in the U.S. So we don't have to spend that much money because I I just feel bad. Mm -hmm. And they're like, no, like you deserve it. We want to give you it. And it's been a while like since they did like a huge trip like that. Mm -hmm. And they've invited like Kendra was there, Vicky Chase. Um, I think Gianna went and then so did a a few, a few of the angels went. Mm -hmm. And it was fun because it was like a group trip. They had a whole itinerary list. And on top of that, we were also taking photos. So yeah, I was like in the middle of Tokyo. I was going to say, I saw those photos like in yeah. the middle of the street. That was what, real too. What was that like to shoot? Did they stop traffic or was it just like, okay, Violet, no cars are coming. Like run out in the yeah. middle of the street. So <laughs> really? when, when the co- when the, like there was a red light, they're like, all right, let's go. So they were taking pictures. I had a lot of people give me stares, but not in a like dirty look. They're just like, is she famous? Like, who is she? <laughs> um, it was so much fun because, like, on top of work, we were. I was also able to like experience the culture. We had a translator there, Momo. I love Momo. That's his name, mm-hmm. and he was just there, like, showing us around. And I don't know. It was just like a culture shock, but in a good way because mm-hmm. obviously I love anime, and like just being there, it was so cute. Like everyone there, like the. The taxis have like anime playing in the taxis. Mm-hmm. The signs, there'll be like anime girls like on the billboards and everything. It was just like a culture shock, but in a good way. And it made me want to 
work towards retiring and living there when I get older. Oh, wow. Yeah. What was some of your favorite things about Tokyo? The food, the That's shopping. Honestly, just how like everything's so walkable. Mm. I love that. And I felt so safe. I was wearing a skirt on the last day and like I didn't even get no like cat calls. No one was like looking at me up and down. It was funny because there was like a guy singing, but he was like singing anime openings. It was fun. I don't know. I just I'll always be grateful for that experience I got from Vixen and giving me that because I was like my first ever international trip. Yeah. And it was cool because I got to go with my Vixen family. Yeah. Yeah. So you have a podcast now. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So my podcast, it's called The Morning After Podcast. And it basically is just like another platform for me to just like just dominate and just talk with my friends because I do it with my two other friends. And we just like we talk about everything. We bring Mm -hmm. on like guests like that. I feel like deserve a platform to really talk about their story, Mm -hmm. but also for us, a a good way for us to catch up, but also for people to like listen to like what we have to say. Because we always have something to say, whether that's like something we see on social media or like the news it's just like a platform for me to like to talk because I have a YouTube channel and I talk a lot on there Mm -hmm. and I was like I want to talk more Mm -hmm. (laughs) so that's why I want to do the podcast and I've always wanted to have a podcast Mm -hmm. so like when my friend and I brainstormed we're like we should start a podcast I was like yeah we should I was like I've been wanting to do this because I was gonna just do a solo one but it's like much more fun yeah when you have your friends involved and that's kind of how it I came about it. Yeah. So you say that you have guests on that you feel like deserve like some kind of platform. Can you give me an example of the kind of people that you've had on? We've had like TikTokers, YouTubers, and I feel like usually people don't approach them to get them on the podcast or just to talk about how they started because a lot of these people have huge followings. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting to hear their story because I feel like TikTok YouTubers are like obviously the new celebrities. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, actually. A lot of them have, like, different lives. Like, we had interviewed someone that dan- that's a backup dancer for K-pop stars. We've had, like, famous YouTubers from the Valley. Mm-hmm. Like, these foods. And I don't know. There's just... I like hearing people's stories. I have yeah. a lot of questions. So, like, these are people that my friends and I, we see on social media. And we want them to be interviewed because we feel like they'll also... I feel like their fans want to see it, too. Yeah. Do you have any favorite guests I feel like everyone was my favorite. I don't want to spe- like specify someone because I feel right. like they're all really special to me. And every mm-hmm. episode that we have a guest on or that we do ourselves is very special because, you know, it's just like everyone's different. Yeah. Have there been any anybody that came on that like really surprised you? Like you thought one thing about them before and then they came on and they were like, totally different than what you thought or had a story that really shocked you yeah we had one that was like a veteran that one was really interesting because like I don't know any veterans and Mm -hmm. like hearing his story and his like PTSD and everything because he is a famous influencer Mm -hmm. when you see their page you don't think that's what like you don't know their past right so when I when he came on it was really interesting I I, that one like I remembered the most because yeah you don't really think about how much PTSD veterans have or like, you know, what's after you serve for the country. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's really, I mean, I can't imagine going to war. That's like something that's so foreign to me. Mm -hmm. And I can't imagine how you deal with that afterwards and assimilate like back into society. You know? Yeah. So that's why I was like interested because he was, I I didn't even know he had that past or anything. Yeah. So you also have a YouTube channel where mm-hmm. you talk about a lot of things. Do you have any, like, what are your most popular topics or most popular kinds of videos on there? People like when I do, like, Q&As. Okay. They like when I, I like to do these, like, once every, like, three months. They're, like, reading their um, their confessions. So some of them, will, it's obviously anonymous. I'm mm-hmm. not going to put their Instagram or anything because yeah. I think it's, I mean, it's a secret. I don't want to expose anyone's secrets, yeah. like, or at least a person. But they'll like confess their juicy secrets and they're really good. Mm. So that's like really popular on my channel. So like like their sexual secrets? Just like anything. Like anything. It's, whether it's like, I don't really remember too many of them, but I just remember a lot of them are like, like, is this real? Or is this a porn plot? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Because you would think like, I mean, like 
I guess like we get inspired. That's how we create a porn plot. Yeah. There has to be something real about it. Yeah. So some of these will be like, I remember someone said they like dated a girl because it looked like their mom. <laughs> but obviously it was a confession. So I yeah. was like shocked. I was like, oh, wow. Yeah. So a lot of people like that because it's like, it's kind of like gossip almost. Yeah. It's so, like wild. I mean, yeah. They're juicy confessions. Yeah. So the juicy confessions on my channel do really well or the cooking videos. What do you like to cook? Oh, I'll cook anything. But I like to cook like on my channel, like anime or video game recipes. Anime or video game recipes? Yeah. What's, what is that? So there's like cookbooks that a lot of video games um, or like anime shows have, like especially in anime. Like you look at the food or you have you ever seen like a cartoon and you're like, wow, that food looks so good. No. <laughs> I do. I <laughs> love food. So I'm like, damn, that looks so good. I'm going to make that in real life. The, old, the one, when you said that, what comes to mind, do you watch Rick and Morty? I do watch Rick and Have Morty. Have you watched the one where like people like die and they become like delicious spaghetti? No, I have not. Not that I remember. Or like, yeah. <laughs> That's what I remember. Disney movies have like really good food too. <sighs> what Disney movie is good? Uh, there was one. I think it's like the Goofy movie and then like that cheese pizza. I still think about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I seen someone, there's this famous guy on TikTok who makes the like Disney movies real life and they literally look like it. That, That's there kind is of, so much to this world that I don't know. There's, I know. So there's video game recipes. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. So like, what is one of the best dishes that you've cooked from that? Like that you thought turned out the closest to what you wanted to achieve? I feel like the, I mean, I had made like sandwiches, like, um, it was the episode I did with, his name's Justin. Mm -hmm. It was like those steak sandwiches looked mm -hmm. like identical to like the steak sandwiches from this anime or the uma rice. Okay. Where it's like you split it and then like it opens and mm -hmm. like the egg comes out and then there's like a curry sauce. That one was good too. That does sound good. I haven't had lunch either. Have there been <laughs> any ones that like you've totally miserably failed at? And do you like post those videos? I still post them. Yeah. Because yeah. sometimes um, it's funny. It you, is. Like, totally fuck it up. I didn't post it on YouTube, but I did post it on, because I have a Snapchat too. Mm -hmm. I upload Snapchat series on there. I did like uh, the SpongeBob Goofy Goober Sunday. That one was a fail because the ice cream kept melting. Mm -hmm. And then like the little M&Ms kept because it was melting so that even the little eyes were like dripping <laughs> with the dye color. It yeah. was really bad. Yeah. But I still posted it. Yeah. Because I was those, like, like I tried. Those Pinterest fails, those are like my favorites. Yeah. They're so good. I should show you that video because it was really bad. But it was entertaining because you could see the disappointment in my face when I made it. I was like, this doesn't look like, this is what you get and what you expect. And uh, we have the Gooberry Sunday, you guys. So, um... If you were put, to put out a casting call for certain types of performers to join the industry, what would you be looking for? I would look for all types of body types. Mm -hmm. More natural. Yeah, more natural bodies. More natural, more diversity. Yeah, because I mean, n now I feel like there's more diversity. There's yeah. something for everyone. But I feel like it's not like on a set and mm -hmm. it needs to be on a set. Yeah, it like, also depends on the kind of set that you're you're talking about like a mainstream yeah because mainstream is very harsh sometimes yeah i mean they have a very specific like look. look and a brand that they've cultivated i found that browsers is really good at um embracing diversity they are, i yeah. think of like all, the all brands, ethnicities everything I think, and like sizes they've had mm -hmm. like plus size women on they've done like trans scenes like yeah. on the browsers site you know because they also have like that company has a whole trans website but they mm -hmm. put like trans scenes on browsers and i remember um i shot one of them and i just remember like seeing that the feedback and some people were like horrified and other people were like actually this is great because i would have never sought this out i would have never gone to a trans site and looked for a trans scene but since it's here and i'm already subscribed to the site i watch it and it actually turns out i actually kind of like this and i mm -hmm. think it's hot which i think is great like the opportunity to you know expose people to different kinds of you know, scenes that they may not have otherwise known that they might like. Yeah, because people usually, I notice too, because I'll ask like normal people who mm -hmm. like, I'm like, what do you like? Do you know, do you have a favorite porn star or anything? They're like, no, I just watch whatever's on the homepage. <laughs> yeah, not not everybody like has a very specific person that they're looking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you still think that there's room to grow when it comes to like curvy girls being fully accepted 
in the industry? Yes, I think so. Yeah, especially with, like the natural bodies, because obviously, mm-hmm. like no one's ever gonna have like a flat stomach or abs and a fat ass. Like that's mm-hmm. really unachievable. But we should learn to love like cellulite, love handles, a little, you know, a little fupa. Yeah. You know, not everyone's gonna have like a perfect body. Because when you yeah. really think about it, I go out, I go outside. And I see a bunch of like thicker women mm-hmm. or like just, I mean, obviously people are going to be in shape, but it's like, like not everyone has a Victoria's Secret body. Not mm-hmm. everyone has like big boobs, flat stomach and a big butt, you know? Mm-hmm. So I think diversity is very important because then also as a viewer, like a woman, you're not just generalized to having that body. And I yeah. feel like women where our bodies are objectified and a lot of people expect us to look a certain way. So when you... I think there should be definitely more curvy women because then it gives like normal women the expectations like I don't have to look this perfect like this. Mm -hmm. I think that's why a lot of women like when I come like when I do conventions, a lot of them will come up to me and say, thank you like for representing like thicker thigh women Mm -hmm. or like, you know, just thick women in general, girls with like saggy tits because Mm -hmm. I do have natural saggy tits. It's not a bad thing. It's like it's normal. It's like Mm -hmm. real. Yeah. So I think definitely it needs to be more represented and. In a positive way, yeah. not in a negative. Because I remember like hating my thighs when I was in high school and thinking they were so huge. And of course I was like so much lighter than I am now. I feel, yeah. <laughs> and now I'm like, and I'm like, okay with the size of my thighs now. I'm like, fuck, I wish it was like that back when I was younger. But I agree with you. When I see thicker women, and I've noticed that my perception has changed. And I think it's been shaped by being in the adult industry and being around so many people that embrace diversity and mm-hmm. meeting so many like bigger women that are like proud of their sexuality and not afraid to get naked in front of the camera and Mm -hmm. are empowered women. And I think that that has shaped the way that I see women because now I'll see like a thicker woman out like wearing, you know, like more revealing clothes. Whereas, I mean, look, to be honest, like 20 years ago, I might've been like, oh my God, why is she wearing that? And now I see that I'm like, you know what? She feels confident. Good for you. Like that confidence that you're wearing right now is sexy. And like, I love that. Mm -hmm. Like, and I admire that. And I find that, and it's actually attractive. It's attractive. It is. Which is like something that I think that I never would have thought I would have seen before. And of course I was so much more self-critical when I was younger because you just tend to be. And now like- It's this comparison too. Yeah. And now that I'm like older and I see that, I think that's helped me embrace like my changing body. Mm -hmm. You know, like you you mentioned like accepting cellulite, like- (laughs) That's the hardest thing. Yeah, but you, you know, it's like, I got that. I mean, I'm 45 and I had a kid. Like, I could just Photoshop it. Yeah. I mean, I d- don't, don't get me wrong. I, I, I do love, that too. I love doing but, that. But I'll like, you know, I'm like wear shorts out. I'm like, this is, this it's is normal. It is. Yeah. I feel like guys generally, they don't care the way that we think they do. Yes, they don't. You they know, really like don't. the way that women view, way that we view and criticize ourselves. I feel like men, majority of men do not look at us the way that we look at ourselves. No. And then also too, I was having like a deep thought a few days ago. I even tweeted it, but I deleted it because people were like, are you okay? (laughs) But I was like, we don't really like know what we look like to someone else. Like how I like see you right now is what you, is different than when you see in the mirror, Mm -hmm. you know? So we are our worst critics. Yeah. Yeah. The body dysmorphia stuff is, is real and it's crazy. And I've, I noticed that especially because I'm in, I've spent most of my life behind the camera, right? And now like I'm in front of the camera a little bit. And the way that I see myself and the way other people see me, and I compare that to like when I shoot a model and the model's like, you know, if I get a model who's got some insecurity, she's like, oh God, I hate that part of me. I'm like, I didn't, like, I see that and it doesn't bother me at all. Like, yeah. I don't even notice it. And that's the first thing she looks at. And I'm always like, why would you hyper-focus on that? Like nobody else sees that. But now like that I'm spending some time in front of the camera, I do the same thing. My eye goes to whatever part of my body I hate. That's the first thing I look at. And I'm like, and then it like colors the entire thing for me. And nobody else is seeing that. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, yeah, it's wild. Yeah. That's why I kind of learned to like, you know what? Just kind of just be happy that you're just healthy. Mm -hmm. Because that's the number one thing is health. Yeah. How do you take care of your health? I go to the gym a lot, obviously, because I feel like mentally the 
adrenaline rush and everything, just feeling like I did something for my body correlates mentally. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's just me. No, but I'm the same. I'll, I go I go to the gym so I don't lose my mind. Yeah. And yeah. if I don't go to the gym, I'll just watch what I eat. Because mm-hmm. um, what you eat too can affect your mental. You can't really eat too much fast food. Here and there is fine. Like who doesn't want a burger and fries? But Mm-hmm. You really have to be careful what you put in your body. Yeah. What do you generally try to eat? Like what's your kind of staple meal that you find works for your body? Chicken, rice, salad. And then sometimes I'll want a burger or a slice of pizza. Because mm-hmm. I learned it's all about balance. Because mm-hmm. then I'll like crash out and I'll just binge eat. And then I'm like, I shouldn't have like try to force myself to be healthy. Mm-hmm. Like I should just have like a healthy balance. Yeah. Or like if I want a cra- like if I have a craving for something, I'll make it at home because yeah. at least I know what the ingredients are, and I can like um, be cautious of like the condiments or something. Because mm-hmm. when you order like a burger or something, because my I like burgers, they'll go crazy with the mayonnaise and ketchup, mm-hmm. and I'm just like, oh, that's just the calories. That's adding more calories. I don't know. I'm not too into calories, but I am about making sure there's like like a balance. Yeah, like the sauces, you do have to. Watch that yeah. because it's like you'll get a salad, but then you'll the dressing. <laughs> yeah, or I'll never forget. So my <laughs> my dad is South African, so I have a huge family in South Africa, and I remember going to visit them, and they like had never met anyone from LA, mm-hmm. and and because they eat so much meat, and like they're very unhealthy over there. They're farmers, like most of my family's farmers. And so they, they made for the LA cousins, they made us a healthy salad and they were so proud of it. And they presented it to me and it was literally like iceberg lettuce, an insane amount of cheddar cheese, an insane amount of sour cream, an insane amount of ranch dressing. It was like, they're like, look, we made you a healthy salad. I'm like, there's literally more calories in that salad than it is in, in like those boar wars over there. Yeah. And it was just funny. Cause I was just like, no, that doesn't, it's, You got to watch all those little things that you put on it because you can definitely make a salad like so unhealthy. You can add it. And then there's some people that that, that go crazy with the dressings or like croutons. Yeah. But I like to have spinach in there too. Like I'll even, I'll have to force myself to add spinach to it because I'm like, I need my greens. Yeah. Yeah. What about mentally? How do you take care of your mental health? Um, Spending time with family is very important to me um, because... You're close to your family? Very close. Yeah. Yeah. Because... Mentally, they'll bring me back to like where I used to be. They ground you. They ground me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it just reminds me of like where I started. And it shows me like, you know, there's bigger things than like what people say online. Because that can really affect you mentally, really. Mm -hmm. Because it's online and it's not real. And then if you're having a bad day, someone says something bad, it can affect you. But I learned to have a close relationship with them. I have a close relationship you know, to God. So that keeps me like grounded. So whenever I need to talk to someone, I'll talk to him Mm -hmm. or writing, writing like how I feel instead of posting it on social media. Mm -hmm. Cause like sometimes people don't care. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. So like journaling, journaling, reading, just getting myself out of like violet Mm -hmm. and then just being more grounded. Mm -hmm. I want to like meditate more cause a lot of People I know meditate and I'm just like, they're just such calm people. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like what I want to go more towards, just meditation. meditation. Or just like listening to like self-help books. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned God. So are you religious? Not religious, but I'm spiritual. Very spiritual. Yeah. Um, My mom's very spiritual. I grew up in a Catholic household. Mm -hmm. But as I got older, obviously you got to figure out like what your path is or whatever. And I just... I am close to God, but it's not in a way of like where I go to church every Sunday Mm -hmm. or anything. Because I grew up, I used to go to church a lot. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I I don't have to go to church to talk to God. Mm -hmm. I can go in my room. I can shower, talk to him. Like there's just different ways. But it's just like more of a touchy subject for me because Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people, because of what I do for a living, they think that I'm this like other type of person. But... Mm -hmm. You know, just like everyone else, I clock in and clock out, you know, I can mentally check out and and go back to real world. Yeah. I think the family thing is really important because I'm Mm going to assume probably that when you're with your family, you don't talk about like Violet Myers, like Mm -hmm. you are who you are. We like talk about that person. We talk about like dumb stuff. Yeah. And like silly stuff, like memes. Yeah. Like how are my cats doing or 
Just like family drama. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like I love family drama because it's so funny. I find that people who handle what can be, you know, tumultuous seas of being in the adult industry and all the stressors that come with it and the stigma, the people that handle it the best are the ones who have like a strong family background. And I think a lot of people assume that adult stars, like their family, I mean, some of them do shame them. And it's like, I I feel so bad. Yeah, those are really rough. Because I know a lot of people that wish they had that family Mm -hmm. and that's you know they'll create another family Mm -hmm. you know they'll you'll find like family doesn't have to be blood always it can be like your closest friends or or even a fan too like Mm -hmm. a lot of my fans i'm so close to and like i'm always there for them and they're for they're there for me but there's really no bond like a family bond and i wish like i really wish everyone had that yeah yeah no i hear you well, Violet, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. It was such me. a pleasure to connect with you again. Um, we're going to do a little bonus Q&A for my Patreon members that will be available only on my Patreon site. But uh, for now, can you tell everybody where they can find you online? Yes, you could find me on YouTube, Waifu Violet, W-A-I-F-U Violet, and the same with my Instagram. And then if you want to find all my official social medias, it's linktree.com slash Violet Myers. Don't get catfished because I do have a lot. Yes. Catfishing. And you know what I also just remembered? Just because I don't want Damon to yell at me. Where could people buy your fleshlight? My fleshlight? Yes, you guys. (laughs) If you want a chance with me, but you're afraid to meet me, buy my fleshlight. Fleshlight.com slash Violet Myers. It's the closest thing. I've had so many people tell me that use my flesh eye and have fucked me. And they're like, this is the fucking same. So yeah. the only thing is obviously, I mean, put a VR glasses. Yeah, then, there you then, go. You know? <laughs> and your flashlight fits in your drawer. It's you don't, so easy. You don't really fit in the drawer. Um, yeah, I don't fit in a drawer. <laughs> or, you know, there can't be a million violets, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. So that's the closest thing you're going to get yeah. to me. The flashlight, uh, the the material that they use is... Re- I actually used to shoot for them all the time. And it's really amazing. Like, yeah, if, if you've never technology. felt like a flashlight, like whatever they use, I know it's like a patented technology that they use to create the actual... Like, and it's a real mold. The, yeah, it's, it's a real mold. I have been there. I have photographed the molding. It is a real mold and um, the way that it feels is really, it's really amazing. Yeah. Yeah. My partner was afraid to use it because he was like, it's not real. I'm like, try it. He's like, whoa, this feels like, this feels like, feels like it. The only difference is like, I wish there was like temperatures. (laughs) Yeah. Right. But if you put the heater on a little bit, you know, put it on the little, not too close, but put it in there just a little bit, a couple seconds and then, you know, you feel warm. Isn't there like warming lube? There is warming lube. There you go. Or we're like those those warming condoms. Yeah. There you go. So many, so many ways. So many ways to experience Violet. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, if you guys want to follow me, I'm at Holly Randall on Instagram and on X. Uh, go to hollylinks.com for access to all of my platforms. And like I mentioned before, patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered to watch interviews like this streamed live and get access to the bonus Q&As my fine art photography, other content. There's all kinds of stuff on there. So come join us. And thank you guys so much for sticking around. I will see you next week.